Greetings to you and alls, and welcome back to my little channel. Thank you for letting me into your home. Well, here we are again. Still in interest in times, my now. We still in interest in times, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, now I've been a bit busy, which is why these videos come out sort of uh, infrequently and intermittently. Um, I've been working with a Steaming Cup of Reason on our collaboration, The Pain of Progress, looking at the various um, pieces of modern technology, things that make our life easier these days that have, uh, you know, we take for granted, but have come to us literally through a pain of progress. Most of them have come from, you know, warfare, that sort of thing. If you think that might be something you're interested in, um, they're listed on my channel, they're listed on Steaming Cup of Reasons channel, and they're also all listed up on the EIE Network channel. So go to any one of those three places, have a look. There's all sorts of interesting things going on. Anyway, um, this is the second of what was going to be sort of three or four presentations exploring the various fallacious devices um, that are used by conspiracists in debate and argument. Um, now, I'm certain I was going to do three or four. It's going to be a lot more than that because when you dig down deep, there are there are literally hundreds of these um, logical fallacies that they can use. Um, I don't know how many of them I'm going to cover. A lot of them, but um, I'll certainly end up doing more than the original four. Now, I'm focusing particularly on the flat Earth camp when I talk about these fallacious arguments, because um, I, I get to engage them a lot, you know, our mentally disadvantaged friends, and I thoroughly enjoy tearing apart their arguments. Um, secondly, they tend to use a vast range of fallacious devices um, within their own little flat earth world, because that, to be honest, is all they've got. Um, since anyone with any sort of access to the outside world and even with a modicum of common sense, can see for themselves that the Earth is spherical. Right, so, in the last episode, uh, we looked at the appeal to authority, the misuse of principle, and the slothful induction. Now, this video is going to be a lot shorter than those. I think we'll keep it to two today. Um, so, we'll, we'll look at another couple of these little tricks, starting with the argument from personal incredulity. The argument from personal incredulity. Now, this is also sometimes known as the appeal to common sense, um, a title which in itself is something of a misnomer, since any person who needs to apply it often has little or no common sense of their own. Uh, now, the, the fallacy asserts that a proposition must be false if it contradicts their own individual belief or the collective belief of a peer group. Now, this, this fallacy is frequently observed surrounding the arguments of our beloved Nathan Oakley. Now, anyone who has watched his daily bleatings um, or simply just listened to them, um, you cannot fail to be struck by two things. One, his complete arrogance, and he appears to genuinely believe that he has more knowledge and insight into matters of planetary formation, of physics, geology, geography, lots of other ologies than any other person on the planet, uh, with perhaps the exception of, of J.M. Truth. Um, but he'll often declare the world's principal scientific minds to be wrong and himself to be right. I'm sure many of you have observed him doing that. Secondly, his total ignorance of anyone else's opinion. Um, if you are amongst Oakley's ever sort of diminishing gaggle of acolytes, your only option is to either completely accept everything he says without question, despite the fact that it's all nonsense, um, and a lot of it actually made up on the spot, um, or if you don't agree wholeheartedly and unquestioningly, you risk immediate exile from his little echo chamber. Um, so those who apply the argument for personal incredulity are literally amongst the most closed-minded of all conspiracy advocates. They are completely closed off to any suggestion that they might be wrong and will not just reject fact-based evidence presented through 
you know, a logical argument, but they'll often refuse to even allow such evidence to be presented. Um, which is why Oakley will happily debate with anyone, provided it's on his channel, um, where he will, within minutes, mute the guest and then continue to waffle nonsense at great length for the next two hours. Um, so his propensity to ignore anything, the sort of anything basically vaguely scientific in favour of whatever fantasy inv invents, um, and also his inability to articulate himself in any kind of logical way is the reason why on the rare occasions that he has engaged outside of his safe space he immediately crashes out in a cloud of embarrassment and just simply refuses to speak as he did with conspiracy cats um so by a flat earther maintaining the self-centered illusion that they know better than anyone else on the planet then they can dismiss any other argument that doesn't allow align with their own personal fantasy The straw man fallacy. This is a particularly common device used by certain flat earthers. Now, I say certain flat earthers because it's a very deceptive device that needs to be consciously applied. And being as the vast majority of flurfers don't possess the intelligence required to build an intentionally deceptive argument, it is usually beyond their capability to use it. So it tends to be a tool of um, pose, disciple whores, and sort of subscription farmers. Um, now, the term straw man has its origins in medieval warfare and was lit literally a man of straw. Um, it was used in battle training. So came into use as a literary idiom meaning an adversary that is easily defeated um i think it's first recorded in print in one of the one of the early 17th century english um military manuals from about 1620 now as we all know your average flat earther and in, indeed your above average flat earther doesn't stand even the slightest chance of winning an argument using anything like a logical argument since their entire body of evidence is based on error and generally an inability to understand even the simplest principles of any scientific method so if you make an argument the only way that they can counter it is to presume that you said something completely different now for example proponent x says um i have a degree in physics and so i know the earth is a globe proponent y wishes to straw man x so they say so what you're saying is that only people with a degree in physics can talk about the shape of the earth that of course is not what x said or even intended to convey but it's far easier for why to attempt to discredit the erroneously formulated argument they have imposed rather than for them to argue against the original position simply because they cannot understand the complexities of even basic mathematics so instead of having to face that reality they'll simply invent another one and stand behind that so there you go two more fallacies that the flurfers and other conspiracists like to use as i say we're going to keep it short tonight i haven't got much time and it is actually very very late here um so i will thank you all for watching um stay safe as always be nice to each other be nice to yourselves we deserve a bit of niceness at the moment things are not going well in the world so uh you know best uh make the best of it if we can anyway as i say thank you for watching be nice all the usual stuff click subscribe click thumbs up click thumbs down whichever i'm not really bothered it just it means that you're watching so that's all that matters isn't it if you are subscribed i love you if you're not i love you anyway so until next time thank you for watching I will catch you soon. Au revoir.
Did I mention that I'm also very, very drunk at the moment? <laughs>